Its proper meaning signifies what refers to another. Relation signifies what refers to another. So relation, sorry, we're, we're, I know we're climbing the mountain now. Relation doesn't have to positively describe the subject. This is, this is a, I mean, this is a, so first of all, we're still dealing with uh, Aristotle, so this is a, a pagan philosopher who's, who's, you know, just brilliant philosophical work. So it doesn't have to positively describe it to this, describe the subject to, and tell you about the subject. It can just order it to another, right? It, doesn't, it doesn't, might not tell me about this, but it might tell me it's to the left or to the right or, uh, so it, this gives relation an ecstatic character related to, to, to something else outside of it. In other words, it borrows its reality, right, relation, in, in relation, it borrows its reality from the other thing. Like if I say, well, I'm to the left of the building. Well, that doesn't tell you about how much I weigh. You, it doesn't, it doesn't tell you about something in hearing in me. It tells you I'm, I'm borrowing, you could say, from the building. Because of this, among the ten categories, relation is the freest of the limits of the material subject, okay, and in a sense is the weakest of the nine properties or accidents, and is the most distant from substance, and therefore it is the best category we have to apply to the Trinity. So a real relation, and that's why I bothered to tell you about real, logical, and then mixed. So we're talking about real relations, so think double and half, or, or push, pushing and being pushed, something that's in, in the things, the relation is in the things. A real relation then has two aspects. It's in the substance, okay, because it's like double or half, is you're actually referring to something in the substance, and it relates the substance to another. And I'll give you some Latin terms here for each of those. So, so. real relation has two aspects. It's in the substance. And the Latin here is The Latin is essay in, just means being in, okay? And it relates it to the other. Is that how I said it? Relates it to the other substance. Relates it to another. Essay odd, you could say, being toward. Okay, referring to another. How is, it, how is it directed towards something else? So, we have two aspects here. SA in would be like when we compare, let's say, a two foot snake to a four foot snake, right? Two feet is half of four feet in the real order, and so this snake is two feet in the real order, and it's truly half. So, that's so. Two feet is really, so that would be the SA in, in the substance. It's in saying, in saying that it's two, in saying it's half as, as big as the, the four foot one, it has the aspect of being in, right, half. It's two, actually really two feet, that would be SA in. We also have the SA odd that the two foot snake is only half as long with respect to something else, that's four feet, right? And so for instance, here when we say it's directed toward, so I couldn't say, you know, if I say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm twice as much, and you say, well, Twice as much as what? And I'd say, no, well, I'm twice, just twice as much, not with respect to anything else. Well, that wouldn't make sense. So, essay in is in, real, is in the thing, but then there's a second aspect, order towards something. So it has to, it's with respect to something else, not just itself. So, St. Thomas is going to align the aspect of essay in, so of being in, with the divine essence and the unity, God's unity, the divine essence. Going to associate, he's going to align those two. 
And then he's going to align the aspect of being toward, essay ad, with the persons in their distinction. Okay. This way, there is not unity on one side and distinction on the other, but the three and one converge in the concept of relation. And I think this is the, I think there are the two most brilliant uh, discoveries, intellectual discoveries, uh, I think of one is, is Aristotle's description of act and potency, right? He describes in terms of talking about how things change, you know, you burn a piece of paper and it becomes ash. And the problem is you say, okay, so what happened? The paper just disappeared and the ash just spontaneously generated and there's no connection? You say, no, because otherwise you'd expect if you burn paper, sometimes you get a gold brick, sometimes you get a candle, sometimes you get ash. No, there's, there's a connection. But on the other hand, what, how, how are they connected? You know, so you say, otherwise you just say, well, there's an illusion, right? There's no changes in illusion, there's really no change, right? You're just drawing a system and saying nothing changed within the system. But that's, and that's Parmenides had things locked up, it just, you know, changes in illusion. But that's so imprecise, right? If you're, you know, you're walking through the jungle and you, a tiger comes upon you and, and eats you, you would say, somebody could say, Parmenides, well, that changes in illusion, you know? Or I'm drawing the system like this inside the system, right? Or, you know, the system as a whole, it doesn't change. Well, there's a big change. So that's unsatisfying and Aristotle de describes things in their present state in terms of what they can become, potential form. And that's a brilliant breakthrough. He breaks through that, that uh, log jam, the Par Parmenides. I think that's one of the most brilliant discoveries. The other is this right here. St. Thomas sees in the concept of relation, and I know this is sort of, uh, well, I, I, sh I, shouldn't, I shouldn't underestimate your, your desire to, to, uh, to contemplate. In the concept of relation, he sees these two aspects and he sees how they can be deployed to, to, to grasp the mystery as, you know, insofar as possible. So that, again, you're not emptying out the mystery, or exhausting it, explaining it, but you're showing how, you could explain it to Aristotle, right? The analogy of the word and love, you could say, see, there is, there's, how could there be perfect unity in the divine essence, not two essences or three essences, one divine essence because there's a procession that remains inside God. And how could they possibly be distinct? Well, because there's a procession. So there's one proceeding and there's one from whom that one proceeding proceeds. So they're, they're, they're distinct there. And you could say, then you see this aspect of relation, which you say, by the way, Mr. Aristotle, you, can, you, you recognized relation. You recognize that every, every kind of being, even in the world, is has a relation to things around it. And amazingly, for real relations, it's in the thing, right? For, and, and it's also directs, directs, uh, relates the thing to, to other things. And if you look at this concept, this gives us some way to, to coherently say how these can become together. The divine essence is, is, is like the, the relation as considered in the thing, it, in the thing and, and the, the distinction as insofar as they're related, okay? So, of course, there are no, you could say, accidents in God. There are no properties that, because God, God is his knowledge, God is his love, right? In us, we, we're divided, we, we, have, we have many properties, we're not our own, for instance, even humanity. I'm not simply humanity, we all, we all share, we all share in uh, the same humanity, but in God, God is, everything is, is perfectly simple. So relation doesn't inhere in God like some property inhering in a substance, a, a created substance. Everything in God is God. So each relation is the divine essence. And that's why Aquinas aligns the divine essence with essay in, with being in. So the problem has always been to try to knit these two together and not just talk about one and the other. It's very hard to do but Aquinas has found a conceptually brilliant way to do this, not presenting, pretending to resolve the mystery, but to lay hold of it insofar as possible with our limited intellects. And so, in terms of the divine person then, Aquinas understands, as I said, the divine person as a relation insofar as it subsists. The divine person 
who is the divine.